Hello everyone, welcome to this session. In this presentation, we will explore more about a new feature which was introduced from Utah release called Database Compaction. The topics we are going to discuss in this presentation includes What is Table Fragmentation? Introduction to Database Compaction How does it work? Eligibility Criteria Associated System Properties Tables Involved A Real Quick Demo and References to the Knowledge Articles what is table fragmentation? Table fragmentation usually refers to the unused allocated space on a given table. Fragmentation can occur over time as data is updated, inserted or deleted. Whenever a large number of rows in a table are deleted or obsoleted by an update, it creates free space. Over time, with a lot of deletes, the space can grow larger than the actual size on the table. If a new record is inserted into that table, MySQL will try to use that space. Nevertheless, the gaps will be present. This freed up space is not written to the operating system, thus by causing fragmentation. High fragmentation percentage can cause high I.O. usage that can negatively impact the database performance, disk space, query execution speed and a lot of other factors. If the total number of rows updated or deleted over time is more than the total number of rows inserted, it can create fragmentation. Bulk deletion of the data using table cleaner, data management techniques or scripts and also activities like data archiving can create fragmented space. For maintaining optimal operations, employing effective defragmentation techniques are vital. Considering the factors that we have discussed so far, ServiceNow has introduced a new feature called Database Compaction that will periodically identify the tables having high fragmented space over certain threshold that needs to be compacted and works on compacting them to release the free space back to the operating system. This feature is introduced from Utah release. This is provided as a part of the out of the box plugin called DB Compaction with ID com.glide.db underscore compaction which is enabled by default in all the new instances or in older instances which are upgraded to Utah or above versions. As a part of the plugin, a nightly job called DB Compaction will be configured to run in this trigger table. This job qualifies the tables that needs to be compacted and works on compacting them. Only one table will be compacted at any given point in time. If an online alter is in progress for a table during the time of compaction, that table will be ignored for compaction during that job run. Now let us see how the database compaction work. Every night when the scheduled database compaction job runs, it creates a compaction qualification job which is responsible for identifying the tables eligible for compaction by querying the information schema in the database. It then creates an entry with that table name in the sys compaction run table which acts as a compaction queue. The information in the compaction queue will be consumed by the compaction worker and it works on compacting the table. Once this activity is complete, the compaction status is updated into the compaction run table. For the tables to be eligible for the database compaction to work, they should meet certain criteria. The basic requirement includes the table should have a table cleaner rule. If not, it should have a dictionary attribute called do optimize set to true. The table should not be a part of table rotation or extension models. The table should not be a shadow table, rollback table, temporary table or a database view. The online alter feature should be enabled for that given table. Tables that extend from sys metadata are excluded from the database compaction feature. In Washington release, we have introduced new parameters and have made a few modifications to the existing properties to extend the compaction capabilities. In earlier versions, the database compaction feature was enabled for a few tables having a table cleaner rule and it also checked the criteria of having the online alter and do optimize attributes. But in Washington, we enabled the database compaction for all the tables. We disabled this feature for some of the core tables like task, cmdb, sysuser and sysemail to avoid any impacts to the instance functionalities. Since we enabled the compaction feature for all the tables, to make sure the compaction job does not consume more resources, 
we introduced two new parameters called max tables compacted and max tables compacted time frame in days. These will ensure that a maximum of five tables are compacted in the last one day. In case if the compaction job consumes more resources, we now have the ability to reduce the number of tables compacted in a given time frame. Additionally, it should also satisfy other requirements like minimum reclaimable size, reclaim percentage, maximum row count and maximum table sizes. Below are some of the properties that are related to the database compaction and they are defined at the platform level. The minimum reclaimable size on a given table should be at least 10 GB. The table should have a minimum of 50% of the fragmented size, which means if you consider a table having 100 GB in size, the fragmentation size should be at least 50 GB or more than that for the table to be eligible for the compaction to work. This property value can be adjusted to 30% to lower the reclaimable percentage to 30. If there are tables over 500 GB, you may consider adjusting the value to 15% to force a rebuild. The table should have a maximum of 50 million rows in the Utah or Vancouver releases and this limit has been extended to 100 million in the Washington version. The table's maximum size should be 100 GB or less in the Washington release and there is no such limit defined for the pre-Washington releases. This requirement can be safely adjusted to 2 TB considering we do not have any active disk growth alert for your instance. When altering any of the above system properties or if there are any issues with the database compaction job, we advise you to consult the technical support team to suggest you on the next steps forward. Now we will look at the tables involved in the database compaction feature. The first one is the sys trigger which will have the nightly job db compaction configured. Tables that are already compacted or eligible for compaction will be stored in the compaction job execution table which is sys underscore compaction underscore run. For the compacted tables an entry will be made in the table change sys underscore schema underscore change table with the alter type field as compact table. Let's have a quick demo on the points we have discussed so far. I have logged in as an admin user to this instance which is provisioned in the latest version which is Washington. Firstly, we will navigate to the plugins under system definition to validate if the TB compaction plugin is installed. We can navigate to the installed section and we can search for the DB compaction and we can see this plugin is already installed and it is up to date. We can now validate the scheduled job in the sys trigger table and search for the name as db compaction and we see a job is scheduled to run every day at 9 pm instance time and this is the script that gets executed. To know the total size of the database in the top tables contributing to the disk growth, we can make use of the out of the box dashboard by navigating to dashboards under self service and selecting the dashboard as telemetry table growth which shows us the total db size of your instance in gb along with the top 20 table sizes where it is showing the top contributor as sys audit occupying around 98 percentage of the total instance size since we identified sys audit table as the largest table we configured a table cleaner rule to perform data deletion and we deleted almost 98 to 99 percentage of the table data using the table cleaner rule since most of the data is deleted from this table and this table matches all the eligibility criteria which we have discussed earlier, the DB compaction job has to be triggered on this table to claim the free space back. Please note that whatever we are showing here are the table stats collected before the data deletion and this dashboard gives us an estimate of your instance data. Alternatively, you can use the database footprint service catalog in high portal to view the same metrics. To verify if the compaction job has run for this table, we can verify that by navigating to sys underscore compaction underscore run table with the label as compaction job execution table which is showing us two entries for the table sys audit where the state is completed. Hence we can confirm that these tables are compacted and the free space can be should be reclaimed. 
To cross check this, we can verify by navigating to sys underscore schema underscore change table and search for the table as sys audit. Where we can see two entries with the alter type as compact table and the state as complete for the audit tables. Now we can verify the job logs by navigating to node log file browser under utilities in the system logs. We can take an example of the first record which started on 29 June at 01.10 am instance time and put the start time and end time as 01.10 and 01.11 because it did not take much time to complete. We can set the maximum rows as 100 or less and we can give the thread name as worker and the message as db compaction and we can click on submit. Kindly note that this search might take some time to complete and giving larger time frames can cause resource contention at the node level and the node sometimes can get restarted or might go unresponsive due to memory depletion on that particular node. We have got our TXID from our search when we searched with the thread. For checking the full logs we can take the TXID and we can search it in the message field to get the full logs of the transaction. Alternatively we can make use of the module transactions background to validate if the job has run for that particular day. From the job log we can see that the job execution started at uh, 01.10 am uh, instance time and it created an uh, compaction qualification job with SysID in the next line. This worked on compacting the eligible tables as we do not see any errors and once the execution is complete it printed the job execution as successful and it created entries to both the tables uh, which is the syscompaction underscore run and the schema changes table. We have also collected the table stats before performing the data deletion from the sys physical table stats table for sys audit which shows the table size as 475 GB and the reclaim estimate as 0 which is negligible. Following are the table stats after performing data deletion. We have deleted most of the table data using table cleaner and the fragmentation is showing as 375 GB where table size is showing as 163 GB. Now the DB compaction job has been run on the instance. Since the table sys audit is eligible for the compaction, once the compaction job is complete, it inserted an entry into the sys underscore compaction underscore run table and it is showing the state as completed. We can validate the sys schema change table as well where the alter type shows as compact table for the sys audit and the state as complete. Since the sys physical table stats table will take time to have the table data refreshed, we verified the table stats from the database and could see the fragmented space has been reclaimed. Attached is the screenshot showing the fragmented size as 0. Alternatively, we can check the table sizes from the database footprint service catalog available in the high portal. You can refer to the following knowledge articles for more details on the database compaction feature and for information about a few known problem records. Hope you have found this session helpful. Thank you.